Welcome to the Tone Jerks Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Gower, and with me today is Kyle McIntyre. Oh, yeah. How's it going, Kyle? It's going great. All right, uh, let's get into this. Um, what's new? What's uh, shaking? What's grooving? What is good in your world? I got some pedals. Got always. Some pedals, yeah. always pe- pedals for days. I got a, a Ditto X2. Okay. Yeah. TC? And it's TC, yeah, of Those course. Ones, the older one's not the new... No. What the hell is it? Like TC? Is it Ditto X2 Live or some shit? Yeah, that's like the brand the jam new one, the jam one. Yeah, with that's... the microphone. I'm like, that sounds like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get everyone in on it. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, dude, this is gonna be sick. And I'm like, no, that sounds like. If you a... want to do it, just record into like an interface, just like record. Well, it's, what something. it's supposed to do is it's supposed to like change the tempo of the song with like the microphone that picks up on oh. the ditto from like. It'll pick up the snare drum. And I'm like, yeah, you ever played a, in a, a show, dude? Yeah. Like, it's fucking loud. It, it may. You don't know. Uh, you don't know. You it's don't know. life. You don't know. It's <laughs> life. <laughs> anyway, so those new ones came out. So a lot of the older ones kind of are dropping in price. Yeah, I still need to try it out. Um, right. It was one of those uh, Guitar Center buys okay. where, like, it was, it was like, posted to the website. It Very didn't have a picture yet. company, yeah. Yeah. Was, <laughs> Guitar Center, I think they're a boutique brand. Yeah. Mom, mom pop. Mom and pop, brick and mortar, mom pop. This <laughs> is <a> set up. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, so I saw on the website, it was, like, uh, a lot cheaper than the rest of them. So I was like, it didn't even have a picture on it. Okay. Uh, everyone Swipe. else, all of them had, like, established pictures. Yeah. And they're, like, 130 to, like, 100. This was, like, 89. I was like, yeah. Going Shit, for it. 20 bucks less than everyone else. I'm going to go for it. So just got it in today. All right. We'll have to check it out. Yeah, check it out. Um, Then I got a Crybaby, actually. Okay. So I, I got it at a pawn shop today also. I went to a pawn shopping. Pawn shop, yep. So I was looking. I, I see it's where the uh, Hot Monkey Love Cafe used to be. Okay. Stupid What's name for all, a, all of our people who live in San Diego. Yep. So the two people. Yep. Yeah, well. <laughs> Yeah, two people, you guys know what's up. Yeah. Worst venue ever. Um, <laughs> oh, God, that venue fucking sucked dick. They never ran anything correctly, and they opened, up a, they opened up a new venue in San Diego. I guess we won't name it, but that fucking sucks dick, too. <laughs> the sat live sound is fucking terrible. <laughs> it reminds, fucking, of a, reminds us of 2005 again. Shitty ass, like, bar area. They're like, oh, we're a bar here, but we only have PBRs and, like, red wine. Jesus. What the fuck is this? Anyways. Anyway, sorry. so I got Crybaby, and they, they they had three of them under the cabinet, and I saw one. I'm like, I see one. I'm like, okay, that one's modded. Maybe the guy will give me yeah, for cheaper. And it has an LED on it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, shit, that's what, it's you good. know, that's what I've done a mod on that. And then I'm like, I noticed it has like a volume control and then a button on the side. I'm like, I don't know what the what the fuck those are. I'm like, maybe the guy will give it to me cheaper. And he's, he's, he immediately, as soon as I picked that one up, I'm like, oh yeah, how much is this one? 40 bucks. Well, I'm not going any lower. I'm like, okay. Um, yeah. modded. Okay, fine. Well, it's, I guess he's a, well, now it's everything you want on it. You don't have to, I'm like, he's, I should charge you more. I'm like, just fucking give it to me. <laughs> I mean, he was fun. Nice. But I think like right off the bat, he was like, Cause he's on, he's he's like inner city, like he's like fucking gruff right up front, yeah. like get the fuck out of my store or buy something. Yeah, <laughs> and so I bought it. Yeah. It was nice after that, <laughs> but I looked it up. So I paid forty bucks for it. It's actually like a hundred dollar, like yeah, pedal they're going on like on reverb. Yeah, because he didn't look. It's actually a Crybaby Super. So yeah. it's the uh, Mister Crybaby. Mister, Cry- yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah. Mister Crybaby Super. Yeah, I've never even heard of that. So it's, a it's volume <laughs> wah. Yeah, it has a the yeah. Fuck? I know. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, that's cool. It has the LED. That's the main thing. It has a boost that 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 little button on the side. Yeah. Is a boost, and then it has a volume on the side too. That's so. crazy. Yeah, because that, that's what pe- mods people do. Like the JHS mod. That's uh-huh. what that is. Like a LED plus like a volume boost, or and also the Q control. And that which, costs like a hundred bucks, right? Just to mod it, yeah, something Jeez. like that. It's like yeah, plus, so, plus the fucking pedal, yeah. So I think I may have scored. I don't know. I mean, it, it's still a just a shitty. I was thinking about just pulling all the guts out and rehousing something else in it, but just painting it maybe. Yeah, maybe I'll just paint it now. I don't know, walls are fun. Walls yeah. are fun to play with, but yeah, I don't know how I feel about it, but maybe I'll run it on my little mini board for bass. Yeah, <laughs> bigger <laughs> than your longer. board. <laughs> so it's a full size, not the mini one. Yeah. Yeah. So. I guess that's what my my new acquisitions. You yeah. got anything new? Um, not really a new thing. It's kind of like, well, I, you know, the thing that everybody like they like to shit on when you say you have a a, a tube amp. Yeah. 
You, so gotta, you gotta, you know, repair it. You when the tu- tubes go bad. Well, my tubes <laughs> went bad on one of my amps. <sighs> you could have just gone to another one and waited for that one to crap out. I could. Well, I, I, you could. I, I, well, I don't have a problem like playing fixing. gigs because I'm like, oh, you know, I'll, I have, you know, like four or five gigable amplifiers. Yeah, which is like, you know, you, even your smallest hum- one. You know, humble brag. <laughs> oh, I'm so humble. Uh, you know. So my uh, Rocker Verb 50 1 by 12 combo. Yeah. Like, no joke. Like, You got weeks, rid of your 2 by 12, uh, right? Yep. You, you're taking the wind out of my sails. Sorry. So, uh, I, as soon as I sold my 2 by 12, <laughs> like this, you know, I was like, oh, okay, cool. I played one gig and then it's like, I'm glad, like thankful as fucking shit that it didn't crap out of the show. But like yeah. the day or two after, it was like, oh, let me plug this bad boy back up. And like, it was like, Sound like a- so, and I was like, let me turn that back off. <laughs> Excuse me? <Yeah. laughs> I look at my amp. Excuse me? <laughs> Plug that, you know, turn that thing back on. It goes like, Grrr. I'm like, shit. <laughs> and it did that on standby. Oh, man. It wasn't even tur- turned on. I was like, ooh, <laughs> shit. And How then I was that like, even possible? And I was like, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what's going on here? I'm like, I don't know a lot about amplifiers, which I wish I did, but I was like, okay, well, something's going on here. So I kind of looked at things, made sure I didn't plug something in the wrong way, because, <laughs> you know, I've been... You were drunk known, at the time, probably. Known to, yeah, that's my MO, just to be like, always like... I'm so dumb and drunk. Oh, <laughs> this is what I do. <laughs> no, I was like, okay, well, maybe I'm like, did I plug in the wrong ohms in the back by chance? I, no. Okay, so I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And so I'm like, okay... So you you turn it on, turn it off again, turn it on, turn it off again. I'm like, okay, cool. And then it would kind of work. And then every time you would fire back up again, it would do like the same, like, <laughs> it, like it was like a fart noise mixed with like a loud, like, <laughs> it was not oh. even like the volume knob did not affect how loud it was. It was like, weird. we're playing cool. fucking Wembley right now. That's how loud it was. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> um, And so I was like, okay, fuck. So I was kind of, that was out of commission for a little while. So. I mean, luckily I have, you know, two 8030s. I have an 8015 and a JCM. No, you do not have an 8015. Yeah. Anyways, um, <laughs> so I, I was, I have enough amps, so I it hasn't been the, the forefront of my mind to get it fixed. I yeah. was like, okay, so it's been, I've been out of a rock of verb for a little while, and so I've been playing, you know, JCM for the past couple gigs or whatever, and I was like, okay, you know what? I finally like. Got to take this fucking thing in. I kind of don't know what it is. I'm assuming it's power tubes. I'm assuming maybe it's dirty sockets or something like that. So I took it in to Top Gear. And he got it all fixed. He said it was the the power tubes are bad and the preamp tubes were on their way out. So he's like, suggest you get all. them all. It's like, you yeah. don't have to do the preamp tubes. You can get lump it for a little while and get through it. And I'm like, oh, fuck, you know, just, you're already in there. Just do it all. Just do it all. And he cleaned it, you know. All the, you know, the sockets, cleaned all the, you know, the pots and everything and like just checked it out. He's like, okay, it's all good to go. And I'm like, oh, $300 later, I got well, my amp back. Does it so, sound any better? Oh, it sounds great. I love, and I'm like, man, I, maybe it's just because you are like, you don't have something for so long. I'm like, the Rocker Verb series from Orange is so fucking good. Yeah. It's, it is so good. I have my JCM 900 and it's good. It's Totally passable, but there's no fucking comparison. The yeah. rock of verb is so goddamn good. And so I was like, just the saturation that on it, it's like that there's definition, but there's also like, I don't know, like enough like not like I say fizz not in a bad way, but it's like enough like every note has like its own character to it. I'm like, I it's very like a three D kind of sound. I can't even describe it. I'm like, man, this is great. This is my sound. I really like. Would that. you use dynamic as your kind of too? But I'm like, it can be super saturated, but still be, you know, articulate, clear. Yeah. yeah. So, not and then you know the eighty series is a little more classic, uh-huh. and takes pedals a little bit better. I say a little bit better than the rocker verb. The rocker verb is gonna be that's the forefront, and you add the pedals to kind of like you know you know decrease volume and clean it up a little bit or like put reverb and shit in the back end or whatever. But I'm like, it's its own thing. I'm like, yeah. you got to let that amp be the, be the star. Yeah. So I'm glad I have it back. And it's, uh, you know, it's like, maybe it's been like two months since I've had it and I'm like, Oh, maybe it's just like 
absence makes <laughs> the heart grow fonder, but I'm oh, glad I have that thing back. $300 later, and I found out the- Worth it, though, probably. The, the store or the repair shop that I take that to, they also do, just talking to the you know the guys working there, they don't have it listed, but a uh, little uh, I'm inside tip for San Diego people. Top Gear in San Diego. If you, if you talk to them the right way, they will install Evertune bridges. And uh, they, you know, they, they'll do it. They hate doing it. They hate doing it. He said they, <laughs> they, said, like it's, it. they said it's not a fun thing to do, but he'll oh. do it. And the guys, uh, Dan over there at uh, Top Gear is very good. Like he's uh, with repairs. He does like refinishes stuff like that. He, um, will do like uh, he was showing me like work that he did on some guy's guitar that was like he had like a, almost like a, like, fucking. I want to say like a warlock, but it was like a different kind of. It wasn't like a BC rich. It was like it was that same shape though. Yeah, it was kind of like Explorer BC rich okay. warlock ish mech thing of like a custom <laughs> pe- like a custom like finished job yeah. from some like whatever thing that he did. This guy had it. He's like, oh, I just got this in, and he made it look like a brand new guitar. Really? Like he had this like chop shop piece of shit that he brought in. He's like, yeah, somebody gutted it out and did a crappy router job to put a Kaler, and then he like went back and put like a you know. That's the tail to, in there. You got your your SG repainted there, right? Yeah, and fixed and everything. And then I put the Evertune and in it and stuff like yeah. that. So he, they do great great work there. So that was just me. I'm like, oh, and I'm like, it's such a great shop in San Diego. I'm like, I was like, I you know, I was like, and I was like, yo, will you put an Evertune in a guitar? He's like, yeah, I'll do a good job. I'll do a damn good job. Thank better God. better. He says like, I'll do a better job than Evertune will, but I hate doing it. And it's like it'll cost you some money, but I'll do it. So oh, yeah, that's it's better like, than driving up to LA. You don't have to fucking drive up and back and, to LA four times. So yeah, yeah. Anyways, so that's a little hot tip. So something new between the two of us. We uh, this last weekend we uh, recorded some demos oh, for yeah. our band uh, playing without a pilot with our drummer Brian Rash. Uh, he's been a former guest on the show. He's a very cool guy and very knowledgeable guy. He's a great drummer. So it was a lot of fun. It was a little a little hot. Oh man. <laughs> We recorded it at Brian's house. It was like totally DIY, like tactics, but like the with the mentality and like you know they're like with a pro attitude. Yeah. So it's like uh, we ended up you you know doing it all through Pro Tools, obviously, and like you know um, between like Brian and I, it's like our uh, mic locker and our like uh, interfaces and like different preamps and like he has uh, some outboard compressors and stuff like that. We we're able to like basically like mic up his drums in his living room. Uh, and then we were able to like kind of like live track with him to a click, you know, what upwards of what 10 different or nine different mics on the drums. It was like, Jesus. it was great. And I'm like, so between him and I, we were able to like use like uh, Pro Tools and use his uh, Digio 3 interface and like have my uh, newer uh, Claret focus right. Uh, eight pre as yeah. the slave and we were able to like run upwards of like i think like 14 tracks because we had like uh some live tracks we have some room mics and stuff like that and we were all playing together it was like a really cool situation because we've never really done a thing where we all play live to a click yeah. together jamming so it was very like organic yeah it was very organic and we just did a bunch of takes until we got things like that we all felt were the best yeah. sounding ones <laughs> and like, it was like do it again do it again and we all, again. we all we all were like you know, talking, I'm like, we have our headphones. I'm like, no, do it again. No, do it again. And we were like in control of it. And I'm like, we are able to get the levels on the mics. And Brian's really good at miking drums as well as like myself. I have a bit of knowledge to it as well. And we were like, our, I felt like our powers combined were really cool. And it was really cool working with him. I've never, we've always talked about, you know, uh, this is, I guess, sorry guys. This is like the engineering recording side of things. So if you guys don't like this, sorry. It'll be quick. Hit but, that uh, 15 second fast forward a <laughs> yeah. couple times. But um, yeah, so it's like I, I um, have engineered um, and produced a past like few albums for my band, for the, for our band playing without a pilot. And it's been a lot of fun. It's a lot of, a lot of it is kind of like learning along the way and learning different tricks and uh, working with Brian. He's uh, learned a lot of different tricks on his own because he's done it for his own bands and his own projects. And just uh, our uh, powers combined. It was a lot of fun. I was like, oh, man. Because you always talk about it and think about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, Brian knows his, his way around. And I'm sure he's like, oh, you know, Gower, he kind of knows his way around too. And I'm like, oh, well, like, I, I just like the little tricks. He was teaching me tricks. I'm like, oh, my God. I, like, I've had, I've been doing this for fucking years. And I've <laughs> like, never known these, like, little, it's like. Keystrokes, like uh, yeah, hotkeys or the hot keys. And I'm like, the thing is, I'm like, 
none of us are really going to sit there like learning all these things because that's fucking boring. We want to like get yeah. music recorded that sounds good. And uh, we both have the ear of like, okay, we get things to sound good. I want to speak for us that neither one of us are going to sit there and be like, yeah, cut out yes. the kilohertz at this point and the angle of the mic to this. This is the best way. And I'm like, no, no, no. If it fucking sounds good, it fucking sounds good. That's why we like both of us and you also, Kyle. It's like, it sounds good. It sounds good. We're all there. And I'm like, we, we kind of keep it the most organic way possible, but we're trying to make it sound professional. Yeah, so even though it was like 110 degrees in there. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. It's like I got home and went to bed and then like, I slept through my dentist appointment that day, so that mm. sucked. No, that's no good, but I guess it was <laughs> worth it, though. It was worth it. <laughs> so, yeah, the main point of that recording was just to get the drum tracks done, and then Kyle and I... Yeah, we'll redo... We have another, like, it's like four songs. <laughs> Even so those can... scratch tracks, though, it sounded like fucking the great. bass scratch sounded so good. Yeah, we ended up just uh, recording DI out of your um, uh, fucking, what? The your little, your bass board. driver? Yeah, you yeah, did, so... did the Sans Amp with the... Optical, yep, optical from compressor Serpens from yep, Ground Control. Ground Control. Yeah, so I used like my mini pedal board, and I brought that over and just kind of plugged it into his uh, Orange Crush Twenty. Yeah, he has this like little orange, like you know, like twenty watt, like you know, ten inch speaker uh, orange practice amp, and it has like this like headphone like speaker cab emulated out on it, <laughs> and I just plugged you know out of that into my focus right. I'm like that sounded pretty fucking good, and our demos or like our scratch tracks mixed with like his drums. I'm like not even mixed, not even no compression. No, like, actual edits or anything on it or, like, you know, trying to, like, do, like, you know, some EQ on any of the waves of his drums. I'm like, man, this sounds fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just because, like, we all have the standard of, like, we want to have good sounding recordings. And this is, like, the whole idea is to maybe put this out or just to have it as, like, a demo. But I'm like, we might just actually yeah. put this out. It'd be cool. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I'm a. I we're gonna move forward on it. I gotta like do a like a couple of these tracks, like get them just uh, with the, some plugins and kind of you know do a little bit of mixing, and then we'll move forward. But you know we're gonna do that in the next couple months. That's our next project. So we got four really good songs. I'm excited to get out. And then uh, one more thing about the podcast. Yeah, shirts. We got we merchandising. Got merchandising. We failed to mention it the last couple episodes, but we have uh, t-shirts now. So, uh, you know, I'm, there's like been two people who have been asking about it, but <laughs> they're out for the now. Rest of you. Yeah. For the rest of you, they're <laughs> out now. So if you check our Threadless store, we usually have it linked in the episode show notes. So if you uh, check, I'm sure nobody ever reads them, but if you check the show notes, it's- Well, they're uh, too busy listening, Brian. Yeah. And no one's reading. Yeah, there, there you go. No one reads a podcast. You can't read while I'm trying to listen to something. I can't read <laughs> while I'm trying to look at something. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, just check it. I think it's like, uh, I'm probably going to be wrong. It's threadless.com slash the tone jerks or it's tone jerks dot threadless.com. So it's one of those two, but check out, you know, <laughs> good luck. Uh, it, we're going to throw it on our website as May well. May the odds so. be ever in your favor. Yeah. I'm Forever sure if you search like the tone jerks and uh threadless, like you'll find it. But anyways, we have, we do have shirts and they're uh, not too bad, two designs. So we will add more as time comes and as we uh, gather des- the design. So right now we got two for you. We got some classic tone jerks. <laughs> classic. The, the classic tone jerks logo. Eight months old. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's it for the what's news. That was a, a lot of it. But let's uh, jump into some topics. What do you say, Kyle? Let's do it. I'm ready for it. Uh, this one's yours. What's uh, what's this bad boy? This is uh, underrated albums. Like, so these are like albums that you love or maybe that you notice that are really good and like you think that nobody else... It didn't get the love. Yeah. yeah. They're not like... They could be from a big band. They could be from a small band. But like... They're not... They're no like you feel Abbey like Rhodes, you're the, right? Yeah. You <laughs> feel like you're the only one who listens yeah. to it, right? Okay. okay. What well, do you... You have a couple? Uh, let's see. I got a, I got a list. I think a lot of ours are going to be crossovers. Uh, there's a band. Um, I think we're kind of a San Diego band. So this is like yeah. really underground. So some of you people like... Even out of the country, you're gonna be like, "What the fuck?" But here's your chance to check it out. If you have Spotify, you probably can grab it. Yeah, so a band called Students. Yeah, and uh, their album called New Habits. Oh, so there's a guy from uh, a local band. What was it? The uh, Transit, Transit War. Transit War. Mm-hmm. It's kind of his uh, solo album project. So goddamn good. Yeah, a lot of like rock. Like it's very rock. Like very piano and like simple. Like like rhythms I want to say but like just a driving song like all like all their songs are driving and really like almost like a mix of between like 
drones and like indie rock i want to say but yeah. like with like a punk like kind of edge to it and like very like there's some new wave elements to it it's like the guy would like he kind of like let all the stops out on yeah. this album i think uh elon rubin played drums yeah and uh so elon rubin from yeah nine inch nails and angels and airwaves yeah so he and would. yeah yeah so he he was the he played drums on the album and he just did a solid job and it was just a really great production too so it's not like it's like oh some sounds like you know some local band recorded in you know a garage or a living room <laughs> oh it's, it's it's like it's like it's, awesome it's very great oh, and like great tones. it came out like an 08 something maybe? like that yeah 07 so that was an album that we kind of came into i think we were we weren't they played predominantly 21 and up venues in San yeah, Diego, we weren't there and we yet never were able to go because we weren't old enough but yeah that's a good one. So that was a little too underground, but I still underrated. You guys should check it out. What do you got? Um, I'll pick a, a bigger band. Uh, so some forty one. I've been really getting into like some of their more recent yeah. records, and they're you know they've been around for a while. Too. Long time. Big, yeah, big band. Yeah. Um, I feel like people skip over Underclass Hero. Yeah. Oh man, that is such a great. It's like a concept record, actually. Mm-hmm. It is so good. Yeah, it's it's different it's than anything that they've done before. For sure, there's oh, man. so many hits on that one. It's almost like his like, uh, but that weren't hits. <laughs> yeah, they were. It was a big bigger album in Canada, but not so much here. Yeah, it was just like it really flew me by. I didn't get into it until like three years after it came out. Really? Yeah, it was like a it was like a good few years mm. after it came out that we both got into it. Oh, I thought we got it because I remember buying the CD when it was new. I remember buying it used. Oh. That's how I got into it. Anyways, I remember buying the CD, which is <laughs> yeah, like crazy. A, yeah. Um, no, but it was like, it's like his take, not his take, I guess it's like his American Idiot kind of thing. Yeah. But about him, not about a fictitious story, but yeah, about yeah. his like, more about his life. Yeah. And it was like a thing too, because like when you say Sum 41, everybody's like, oh, killer, no filler. Oh, yeah. man. Love fat lip, bro. Yeah, it's like <laughs> we should have had an abortion, 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 abortion. <laughs> I don't want to. Which that's like, a, those are good songs that's, too. That's like, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> we're not I, dragging on those. The thing is, I, I really like some forty one, but I'm like underclass hero is probably so one of my good. favorite albums. That is such yeah. a great record. That's a good one. And then also another one from some forty one, um, screaming bloody murder. And that's even deeper. That that, that, that was did, after that came out like maybe three years ago. Yeah, that's kind of when they, when they started like. That's when he came back. That's when they started transitioning to playing like under two thousand capacity. Venues. Yeah, they started being like, "Oh, we're playing like the twelve hundred capacity clubs. We're playing like yeah. the we'll 1, play 000, like House of Blues. Yeah, the one thousand capacity instead clubs. of like a stadium. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> they're like, they're like, oh, guess what? You know, oh, there's like nine hundred people here. This is kind well, of our thing. You know, they had they had gone through some changes. So like they lost their drummer, yeah, their original drummer, and then. Um, this is before I think Brown Sound came back. Came back, yeah. So and so they, they were, were. It was. They, they it's were kind of a new band. Kinda. Yeah, kind of some new, new some changes. But it and, is yeah. a great. Yeah, that's a super solid one. Yeah, definitely. I had one uh, to go off of that pop punk theme. Yeah. Uh, you don't like it, but Sugar Cult, Palm Trees <sighs> and Power Lines. Go. I fucking love that album. It like I I listened I to it. a lot of people. Love that record. I don't know if it resonates though. It was popular at the time, but people like we played a show where we uh, covered um, songs. <laughs> it was like for a there. It's popular here in San Diego. It's called a pop punk emo night or whatever. It's like re, like re, you cover ba- it. Yeah, yeah. basically, re, like a DJ will the DJ headlined and like plays like just like <laughs> fucking just plays pop punk songs from like the late two thousand mid like in between bands. Yeah, yeah, in between yeah. bands setting up and stuff. No, yeah. it was like. That no, he headlines like after two. Oh, ba- remember, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were fucking oh, yeah, there. I was dude. there. It's like but I remember two, he was playing music the whole time. Yeah, two ba- two bands played and opened up for the DJ that, that closed and just played like pop punk song, emo songs. So like from the yeah. inter- early early two thousands, like it's a like reminiscent kind of night. And so we picked four songs, and one of the songs that I really wanted to do wanted to play Memory by Sugar Cult, and you guys were like, I don't like that song, and Brian's like, I don't like that song. So I'm like, you both said it, but like, well. I pulled out my fucking card, said, I'm the lead singer guitar player. We're playing in this fucking song. And then you guys were like, I don't care that much. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> like, I cared Get enough. Get off your high horse, asshole. I, I cared enough to bitch about it, <laughs> but not enough to not play it. <laughs> so we did play it, and I was like, yeah, we're going to fucking. And we killed that song. We played it really well. 
but nobody no. knew it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it was like kind of like they were they were quieter for that song than our originals. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm like mother, we, we told them beforehand. We like, said, this, this is just shit on this one, guys. Yeah. Go gra- go grab a drink. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> so like I I know that it's not a very popular album, but like there's like songs in there, even their slower ones. Like back when I was like listening to it when I was a kid, like the slower ones, I was like not uh, enough to appreciate it. I'm like. They rank high on the skippability scale, and I was <laughs> skipping those <laughs> ones. But now I go back and listen to them. I'm like, man, these songs are great. The slow acoustic ones. There's like the in between songs, like fading out tracks and stuff like that. These are great. It's a great album. There so. is one song from Sure Sure. Sh- 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 there is one song from Sure. Sh- I can't say it. Sugar Cult. That's, See, that, that's why. That's why they're not popular. You can't say the name. Sugar Cult. So I'll just skip that. There's one one song called Do It Alone. Yeah. That yeah. song yeah. is so good, but the rest of the songs on that album are garbage. Yeah, that, that album, I did That was like, like their it. last record. Yeah, Lights Out. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, so Palm Trees and Power Lines, that's a, that's a, that's a one for me. I have um, another one. Yes. And that is Scenic by Denver Harbor. Yes. So I had posted that in the group, mm-hmm. and we got, you know, Co Schneider. It's like, oh, shit, I know that he, man. He's San Diego he say, guy. Oh, shit. Yeah. Sorry. He's, Sorry, Co. It's like, oh, shoot. Oh, snap. <laughs> Oh shoot, that's darn good. <laughs> that's heckin' oh, good. That band, yeah, I never, I've never seen them live. So they're that recorded album, so good, so good. Oh yeah, yeah, I've never seen them live ever. But that's basically Phoenix TX kinda. So it's it's mm-hmm. Will Salazar at least. Yeah. So after Phoenix TX, um, which was a band that were on MCA Drive Through Records kind of deal, they are. Did stuff with like they played with and, Blink a lot, yeah, and uh, some forty one, all that deal. They're a local band, also. Yeah, I mean they're they were they weren't local because they got signed. They signed to Universal right away, I think. Oh, or was it, I mean it was or maybe it was MCA. They signed to a major. A lot of the first, guys, I mean, are from San Diego. Yeah, yeah. The scenic from Denver Harbor was signed to a major label. Uh-huh. So you imagine a band like you're signed to a major label right away, Brand boom, new. and you come out with your full length album, and it just between the cracks yeah because nobody knew you yeah and it but just, they oh my god uh, it was they it was so good and it was so out there and before i want to say it's like before it's time like because it's like rock it's kind of doing some reggae shit it's kind of doing some like no yeah no song on that is like a thin sounding song everything is huge yeah it's really um well thought out not something you would think of from like a pop, pop punk yeah, yeah pop punk former band and it just fell between the crack because everybody, I think, probably was expecting Phoenix TX. Yeah, and then the they, drums are super technical on yeah, that. It, again, Holy shit! Elon Rubin from Yeah Nine Inch Nails. That's, yep, that yep. guy. Yeah, they like add like a drums like the like drums super p- uh, far pan to the left, like faded behind something. It's, it's that, that like is, trash cans. Definitely an album that. Oh man, you have to listen to with headphones. Oh my god. Yeah, that one was that was good. Uh, I guess this is kind of us just gushing about bands, but you know we're but gonna un- we're, we're gonna keep keep going, yeah. Because I feel like like underrated albums are like the ones that you like hold so close, you know, to your, you know like to you, and they mean so much to you, but nobody else knows about them. So this is kind of what it it is. Um, let's see. I guess I, I got a couple others. Yeah, go for it. I want to say uh, MXPX. They just came out with a new album. Uh-huh. Sounds fucking great. Kill. Oh God, I was. Really excited when that came out, and especially after you know listening to Tom talk about it on Tone Mob. Mm-hmm. Shout out! Uh, <laughs> he doesn't. They, they, You're neither, welcome, ne- Blake. Neither one of them fucking needed it from <laughs> us, but yeah, I was super jazzed about it. And when he finally it came out, um, but an album from them that I thought was kind of underrated was Panic. Oh man, by MXPX that came out in about 2005 or so. Yeah, and it was just an album like I never. It didn't hit very hard like mm-hmm. i don't remember a lot of people were like oh yeah that's my fucking favorite i'm like because everybody's like oh yeah you know the one with chick magnet or you know <laughs> uh, like, punk rock, chick or, magnet. like punk rock show i'm like yeah but no panic i was so that the tours they did around panic was so fucking fun so yeah. good they were kind of like at the top of their game with that shit yeah because they were like headlining soma just fucking packed out like you know fucking it was like must have been like 1800 2000 capacity club yeah. and they're just like fucking killing it um. Yeah, the whole album was written really well. The songs, like the lyric, lyrically wise, I th- felt like they were at their game. Yeah. I'm a big lyrics guy. Me and, too. Um, 
that's where I felt like MXPX was kind of at the top. And I'm like, I they I was like, oh, they they were killing it. And then they're like, you know, just it kind of got a little bit of that fuse fame. Yeah, they're like, oh, they got oh, some, yeah. they, got, fuse, some, they got some some you know they probably got some money coming in, but they never like they never like broke like they were never like Blink or Green Day big, but they were. Uh-huh. That felt like they that was kind of there. And like he sings a little different on that record too, right? Yeah, I want to say that he's like a little breaking a little bit more and. Like Mike Ness kind of yeah definitely definitely like a lot of social D influence on that so yeah. I I thought that was really cool but it's like a lot of, not a lot of people talk about it it's not yeah. one they talk about from MXPX no so. and it you're right it's legit that is a great record definitely one of my favorites but what you got another one yeah I got uh, one from Thrice is it uh is it the one with a deadbolt on it yes yeah, that one <laughs> no. God damn it. It's the best fucking song they have. No. Yeah, the, the best me. fucking 45 minutes that Thrice have, have or 45 minutes, 45 seconds. Jeez, that's but, a long fucking song. Yeah. No, <laughs> the 45 seconds of that song is good. And then once they start going halftime, I'm like, I'll oh, skip. But you got your point. I, I'm derailing you already. Yeah, come I'm on. I'm shitting all over your... <laughs> this is underrated. And I'm already... You're speaking yeah. to the, you know, convert just how underrated it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's Beggars. That's the album. Beggars. I love that record. It's a completely different feel from the rest of their, mm-hmm. like all the records before. And that's what's cool about Thrice is like everything is different. And this is like way out of left field. You're like, what the hell? Yeah, no. And that's a sports reference, just so you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it has like super like heavy, like distorted bass. Yeah. Uh, yeah which you yeah, don't yeah. really have on a lot of their other ones. It's just really like smooth. Boop, 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 boop. But this is like dun, really dun, like dun, dun, choppy. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, and so like, you have like, you have drum and bass just working together. And then his lyrics on on these songs are amazing. Yeah, I remember listening to it. What the first like, like is it the promotional album that came out? Yeah, like, it was so a it was Vagrant like, Records yeah. promotional <laughs> album, and I think we had a buddy who uh, got that. He got it, and so you'd be listening to the and song, he, and he burned it for everybody. Yeah, and I remember that's how that's the only <laughs> copy I had. So I remember like it's, and when this we, is a va- yeah, like be like halfway through the song, or be like right this, between like verse and a chorus, or like, like a chorus a and a verse. Yeah. This is a vacant ra- records advanced promotional release. <laughs> release, yeah. You're like, and then so like you know that part's coming. That's part you're like mouthing the words so that when that part comes, like this yeah. is vacant records. <laughs> I remember you're like driving and you were listening to the actual album and you're like we're driving like and you're like this is a vacant <laughs> records. <laughs> yeah, after I go, after I bought it. <laughs> yeah, no, I I, I remember I'm taking the piss out of you, but I I do remember that album was pretty good. I do like Thrice. I just like none of their albums were like ones that I would like. Listen to all the way through. Dang. I would pick them apart. You are well. What do you mean? I would no. I would just like pick song, pick and choose. Oh, I see. I would, I I would, like pick, pick the par- songs apart. I'm I like, remember they listening great. to like the first track of Beggars. Was it something? World the is world, mad. World. I want to say the, all the world is over. Yeah, but no, that's not no, that's right. a different band. No, uh, that's a new addiction. <laughs> it's a good band, <laughs> actually. Um, they're more underground. Anyways, um, yeah, and then um, I never listened to the was it the elements one yeah that is a that was that is a fucking great, is, is that right that, yeah it's the right. it's the alchemy index alchemy index yeah there's four records basically yeah and they interpret songs into elemental another one do you, i mean is it on your list it's not that but, one's uh, not on my list uh your your boys the deer hunter they came with the color spectrum yeah. that's a great album i don't think that's underrated though that's like some of their it's best very work acclaimed so good so people know it's like oh yeah. that's my favorite they had the the guy from fucking uh Manchester Orchestra mm-hmm. singing on a on a whole record. They kind of sound the same, don't they? They do not. Okay. He has a very like high pitched whiny Never takes you long to change ran away. <laughs> That's how he, that's how um, he sings. Yeah, no, those are those are pretty good. Did you have any others? I, I had uh two more. I could just zip through. How about them. like uh just like very quickly go through them, just mention them. Honorable Box mentions. Car Racer. The self titled good one. The only. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then Saves the Day self-titled. I love that record, too. I think Saves the Day, I'm going to throw it out there, Saves the Day, the whole trilogy they had. That, yeah, the, so great. But I think, I'm gonna count I think one. people are becoming more uh, like liking that stuff, you mm-hmm. know? I don't know. I see it referenced more often. Okay, you yeah. know, On Reddit, when I'm certain. No, I don't. I'm just kidding. I don't do that. Um, um, 
No, but I've seen it like on the guitar forums. People that talk about it, and I'm like, oh, my job here is done. <laughs> I did <laughs> <And> I leave, <laughs> leave the group. <laughs> I'm an influencer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from my uh, highly esteemed podcast and uh, Instagram. <laughs> you might know me. Uh, no, that's cool. That's a cool topic. So if you guys have underrated albums or albums that you love, yeah, post them. Yeah, post them in the group. Uh, you Join know. the group if you're not in the group. First of all, yeah, and then post them. And then post them. Yeah, <laughs> so. That's cool. So I, I have another topic. So yeah, what we got? When it comes to live shows, stage yeah. theatrics. Yeah. I want to say like things that don't have to do with the like the music, music right? side of things and how well they perform, how well their tone is and yeah. stuff like that. It's like, so stage theatrics, like the looks of their band on stage. So like, whether it be like, smoke like lighting Mm -hmm. maybe like stage props like they if they have like scrims you know like the things where like they have like almost like it's like what is it like screen printed Mm -hmm. things of like giant like on stage of like in front of their amps instead of like showing their amps like maybe like artwork from the album or whatever yeah um like how much of that is important to the show like I think maybe it, even like video screens. Oh my god, even bigger! Like video screens, fireworks, smoke, all that shit. Like, I think if it's like a cohesive thing, like from a, like let's say a big band, they just release a record and they have the theme going along the whole stage. That's cool. I think that's like actually necessary. You know, I think like the is it two times I've seen uh, Green Day, mm-hmm. fucking great, and they've done that for both. Yeah, yeah, both they've, times. they've they've made their whole stage like. You know, kind of yeah. like from themed. From Great the band, by the way. Even though some people think they're shit, just because like the guy's an alcoholic or whatever. But yeah. okay, <laughs> no, he's, not, he's recovering. Yeah, he's, he doesn't drinks. mean he's a shitty musician. He may be yeah. a shitty human being. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, I I think they're probably one. They're people like they're not punk anymore. I'm like they're not punk. He's they're rock and roll band. They're like yeah. a, they're in the rock and roll hall of fame. Like they're a rock band that is so like above what they ever used to be. And they're yeah. like you know. Yeah, they used to be just like a three-piece pop punk band from like you know, the Bay Area, yeah. and you know they just played shit shows, you know Gilman Street, whatever. And they happened to make like a huge career out of yeah. it. Yeah, so and I mean it's cool. They're their music's like, evolved, but like their their actual like live show is fucking crazy. They put on a like they put on a spectacle, yeah, not a show. It, like that's their yeah, thing. And there I'm you like, go. They're on a whole it draws diff- you in different level, and it's like you know, and then there's bands like even like. Not even to make that connection of like uh, Blink, like because yeah. I'm like it's just a small jump to Blink. I'm like they just like focus a lot more on like Butt video jokes. screens <laughs> and shit like that. Yeah, and, like you know, like having Travis Barker like flipping around in the air doing dumb shit like that. I'm like to me, I'm like that is like super, super cheesy. cheesy. Ball. There you go. Yeah, I'm like that is not as cool i think i'm like no i i, I don't it's know. true they're they're playing up the celebrity that they are yeah when green day like they is like, like get conveying like, like this get, like, this album is about this story and we're showing it to you and then they again. do like their live show and yeah. like oh we can have the confetti cannons we're gonna do the fucking like uh t-shirt gun we're shooting it across like he's like we're making it like a spectacle yeah. whereas like blink is like oh yeah here's all this like lights and shit so anyway so so you think if like maybe it just like the size of the show, it's like dependent? I think yeah, I think you you fit the stage that you're on, you know. So if you like, it's a bigger show because we did see brand new on a very large stage here in San Diego. Oh man, they had very minimal anything. Yeah, they had shitty like they barely had any video equipment taken like for video yeah. like, screens or anything for them. But that show was epic, and everybody loved it. It was so it good. It fit their <laughs> band, right? It's true. Because like, could you imagine seeing brand new and it's like they're just like, <laughs> like fireworks and flamethrowers yeah, going off? You'd be like, what? I couldn't see that because they're like they're about that'd the, be super cheesy, right? Yeah, totally cheesy. It'd be like cornball type shit for them and their type of sound. Yeah, but they're we're at a point where they were headlining a huge show with mm-hmm. like what Modest Mouse or something shit like that. Yeah, and it was like that was lame. That, they they sucked. That um, was super lame. God, terrible fucking band. That's what he sounds like. I fell down to a cocktail, made my time die. Bonnie and Don, some bunk on top. We're talking down the radio. Okay, we're fucking, <laughs> gotta stop talking shit about them. We gotta get back on target. Stay on target, stay on target. So um, they, 
you know, had a smaller stage show, but yeah. a huge fucking arena. Yeah. And so it's like <laughs> not really, so it's not really dependent on the I guess it's not, size of the show. No. Is it? No, I think it's, it's, it's all about what you're trying to play into, I guess, like yeah. what you've built with your music. But I think when you're a smaller band, you kind of just have to fucking rip through it and play. You gotta, you, I don't know. So now, now, We've gone now, from big bands to small bands. Yeah, yeah. So now that whole but, thing is so like, does it do, for you? Does it add to the show? But I guess it also could take away. Like, I've never seen a, a no. I take that back. <laughs> a band that I really did like, like a lot. They're kind of defunct now or whatever. Um, get the Gaslight Anthem. Yeah, they did this one show, the tour for the Get Hurt album. Yeah, they had these like fucking crazy blinding light show that they brought to like house of blues style shows Ooh. so like think of like 1500 like 2000 burn capacity. your retinas style yeah it's like what in the fuck and it was like had nothing to do with their music it was basically to like just go off and just like and like lasers and shit like that and i'm like for the gaslight anthem are you kidding me yeah because they they are like a rock like americana rock and roll like but that was like, when they transitioned to like a major label, right? Well, they were, I think, yeah, they had gone, this was like their second thing on Capitol or whatever the hell it was. Yeah, and they and moved. And so like, it was, I don't think that, it was no? just, it was a okay. fucking stupid thing they did. Okay. And I remember like being in forums and people were like, what the fuck is up with the light show? Like, this yeah. is like, like, this is pretty terrible. <laughs> Yeah. This is pretty terrible. It like, makes it like unenjoyable. It's like blinding. It's like got to a point. It's like some people had to like move to the side because it's like you know this is like are you kidding me, you guys? <laughs> it adds nothing to the show, like because they're a band that like their songs speak for it, and they I think they were trying to make themselves like a little bit bigger than they needed to be. Yeah, they didn't have to. No, they're a good band, definitely. Because I- they they played like a big. I remember seeing them a big arena show that they opened up for Rise Against. Which they had a huge fucking show with like video screens oh and shit God. like that, the, and like projectors. They didn't just have that; they had LEDs, like LED screens. They brought like an LED panel. Yeah, and they they tried to show tell a story, or then they like, in between play, songs. Like, have they you had ever video. felt? Have you ever felt like someone on the other side of the earth is thinking about you? I'm like, what are you talking? What? What? But like the Gaslight <laughs> Anthem played, and all they had, I loved it because they're playing giant arenas with just like, you know. Vox AC 30s yeah. and just like their guitars and like simple you know, yeah they pl- they just rocked it out and I'm like man that's cool but like I remember like Rise Against I was like what in the fuck like they yeah. played a big arena I'm like yeah that didn't work yeah, out and like everyone at that Vegas show showed up to see Rise Against yeah and I think it was our time to like oh let's move to the back yeah and then judge this show and then dip not finish it because it was bad yeah and then yeah the Gaslight Anthem I liked it because they were just like oh we're just like we're a rock band and we it was just play our music. And then they got to the point where the next album that they're like, oh, let's step it up a little bit. Yeah, that light show. Yeah, that was not good. And then they broke up. So, yeah. Oh, well. Not saying the light show is the cause of it, but, you know, it could have been. No, so I, what I we, think we, you can overdo it really quickly, I yeah. think, on that stuff. So, <laughs> with that is like, okay, so to jump off of that, how much is too much? Like for the uh, sh- small band at the I think gig. you can still, you can pull off a light show. A tiny one. Would you like? I wouldn't want to howl it. Let's like, say if you're like playing like a 150, 200 capacity club. You say if you're playing in front of like 80 to 100 people, would you want to like? Would you think it's necessary to see lights and shit like that, or is it you just rather see a good band? I'd rather see a good band. I'd rather see a good band. Yeah. Um, like to me, I would think somebody was if they sucked, I would think they're fucking dickheads because they have a banner. Yeah. Or I think they're fucking dickheads because they have scrims. We have a banner. Um, yeah, but we don't bring it to shows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. You're like, yeah. Okay. We don't. You're right. It hangs up in your bedroom. Yeah, because like, we made one, and then we would bring it to shows and put it up on the merch table, and then we got to a point where it's like, I don't want to I don't want to set that up every time. No. And so we're like, fuck it. So it just now it's just hanging up in my bedroom. <laughs> Maybe we'll get to a point where we want to take it out and play when we do shows, but so far it has not been necessary. No. Um, so, but when you see a band that sets up a banner behind them when they play, and then like scrims on the stage, but they're playing like hundred people, eighty people or less in the crowd. It's yeah. Like, that is so worthless. And then overdoing it. 
And if they do, they better fucking kill it. Yeah, if they, they don't they, kill it, <laughs> then go home. Yeah, I'm like, I think it's perfect, perfectly fine to do. I'm like, just put your band name on your kick drum. That's totally fine. Yeah, because that's all you need. I'm like, or don't. just say it a bunch of times. Yeah, and or it's like you know, <laughs> like putting up like lights, like when people bring their own light show. Yeah, that oh my fucking god. See, that is I a, think that I think that's a waste. Sometimes, okay, yeah, well, okay. I saw a band recently. And they didn't actually bring it. They had a buddy do it, and he set it up while they were setting their own gear up, and he controlled it the whole time. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Because they didn't have to worry about buying it, bringing it, or setting it up, uh-huh. or tearing it down and breaking it. I know? guess, yeah. I guess, to, I guess. So for me, I mean, they had a buddy who was just like, oh, dude, I want to set up your show. I want to do it. He's like, cool. Here's the club that we're playing. See show there. up. Yeah. Be there. Or be a dickhead. Yeah, I guess if it's not like yeah, too. If it's not your problem, cool. Invasive, I guess. Because I, I, we played shows before where there was like a oh, touring band. From, like they're fucking from L.A. They're doing like yeah, a three day run, which is like that's that's cool enough. Do do your weekend run. Yeah. But they showed up like they were fucking hot shit because they were like, oh, we had a light show and like a, a video screen set up, and then like the club is like, what the fuck? Yeah. They're like, okay, yeah, we can set it up here, and then they're like, because they weren't getting special treatment because they they had a they had a screen video screen that nobody looked at <laughs> yeah like i thought that was like i'm like god do you want a special treatment and to hold up a show for your fucking screen that's where i think it, it goes it draws a line cause no like, yeah you gotta like, play if you're, if you're holding up your show and you're holding up the bands and like the experience from the crowd for your dumbass like light show and your dumbass fucking screen dumbass smoke if, stiff, if that is dumb. if your music depends on that stuff you suck yeah there you go. Perfect. Oh my God, you hit the nail on the mm-hmm. goddamn head. Um, so it can add to it, but it can also easily take, take away. away take away from it. And it better not be dependent on that. Yeah. So yeah, Kyle, you said you summed it yeah, all up. Yeah, we should just start it with that and then yeah. move up, moved on to the next topic. I'm just gonna edit right there and just yeah. cut that to the beginning. Just put some reverb <laughs> on that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I got another one for you. Okay. So I was thinking uh the other day. How much is too much for a practical, like, gigging board? Yeah. As far as a pedal board. Mm-hmm. When does it become uh, ungiggable? <laughs> when does it become uh, impractical and uh, too much that you're like, what the fuck, dog? Yeah. It, that can happen fast, I'm sure. So, uh, but before we get into it, let me just ask, is mine too much? My PT3, pedal train PT3. Is that too much? Uh, next question. I played the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. no, I think you have it dialed in to like work that you can change out stuff but and not still, have to add. Actually, you can't add any more, I don't it's think. It's still pretty big. <laughs> but um, now, okay, so for you, is it involve too many pedals? Like, is that going to be what is going to make or break a too I think when you, when much you, too much? When you start branching out to other boards... If you, you have two like, boards. You have like two boards. <laughs> and you bring two boards and, to a show. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I've seen artists where they have two boards and like, you know, that those, that board is like for like songs that like three albums that he did before. And then the rest of them is like a new set of songs. That's Shit, different. I've never seen that before. That's uh, how Mike, Mike Rowe, not Mike Rowe, Chris <laughs> from Dirty Jobs. Mike Rowe. <laughs> from Dirty Jobs. Is it Chris, Dirty Jobs? <laughs> Somebody's got to do. No, no. Actually, I was Chris, about to. I was about to say that. I think what Chris, Chris Rowe does. It's but he's, smart. That's what I'm saying. But he has two boards that are like PT, like and, Nano Plus yeah. size boards. Yeah, but they're small. But I'm saying he had one set up for like this group of songs, and then this one set up for this group of songs. So he would dance around on this I'll one. I'll take that to say that's smart. That's not too much. That's, that's what pretty I'm, damn good. Yep, yeah, good. That's that's my point. Thanks for proving oh, okay, it to me. Okay. But if you're you if make... you're if you're linking all of I've seen like a guy has uh, really long I can't remember his name, but he's I, I guess I I guess I take it back. I don't remember the name of the band, but I saw it on Instagram back when that you know that company Salvage Custom or whatever. Yeah. Where they like, you know, shit the bed. They made like three like PT two size boards for some band like some dude they yeah. were all checkered or lined or something Ooh. like that like lacquered and shit band like that you yeah, know they were like a, some rock band or whatever and I was like I remember seeing it I'm like that's really nice looking board probably cost you about $900 a piece and then they, like they're huge like that's PT2 those are damn fucking big 
Yeah. And then he's got three of them lined up, and I'm like, all with like analog pedals in a chain and stuff like that, and like probably doing like some type of like clicking, switching like that. I'm like, but he's like got that surrounding him. I'm like, fuck, dude, that's too much. Well, when the Sweet Water Fest thing was going on, what do they call that? Gear Fest? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. The, they had like some live performance going on. This guy had like two huge boards, their PT boards, and they had uh, four H9s on it. Okay? What? <laughs> but they weren't even put all together. They were spread out. Okay. It's like the messiest board, and you go, oh, shit, I can barely see a slicer in there. Oh, shit, there's those H9s. Oh, shit, there's some Empress. You, you, I see stuff in there, but the, it's the messiest board. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. It was. That, I think that... Was it the Living Color band? I think so, yeah. yeah that guy like threw his shit together. It's, like, like, it's, a, it's cool. A giant board, For right? For me, I'm like, that's cool. That's like something you can mess around in your garage with. I would not want to take that yeah, on the I'm road. Yeah, not going to gig it. Because you have a problem. Let's say you have uh, a signal issue. Where is it going to be? <laughs> Good luck. So that that's a problem. Getting yeah, down there with a multimeter with with some, <laughs> when something's too too crazy, it's like yeah, you're out gearing yourself. There's that's no, what I'm thinking. Yeah, there's no contingency. How are you going to get past it? if your signal's running through all those pedals? Yeah. How are you, if like to me, like I wouldn't gig, and I haven't gigged in a while with a like all in line board going mm-hmm. straight into the amp. Um, but like the thing is, I would see that and be like, fuck. When that goes down, there's no fixing it. You basically just got to plug out and go straight into the amp at that point. So you like all your effects and stuff like that. Kiss that goodbye because nobody in the state and, and like when you're on stage, nobody in the crowd is gonna be like, "Yeah, give a couple minutes to fix his pedals." Like, yeah. I'll I'll wait because I want to hear that chorus. No, they're gonna be like, "What in the fuck is going on?" Let's get another beer. Let's go grab a smoke. Yeah, I don't smoke, but I will now. <laughs> <laughs> this is stressing me out. Yeah. So like. But I could see that when it's too, you know, if you got six to seven pedals, like all in line, that's yeah. kind of a good, yeah. a P, to I mean, me, like you, PT Junior is the that's perfect, your, perfect fucking size board. If you can play 20 pedals and it works every time and it's great, no problems, that's, I think that's an example of it still working for you. Yeah, and it's still being acceptable. And I guess but, if, you, if you've built it up to that point with like solid pedals, yeah. solid cabling, solid power, you know, stuff like that, yeah. then like more power to you. You're not out gearing yourself, and you can yeah trademark that, Brian. <laughs> before this, you can take goes. that to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, okay, I mean, what about like if something like it kind of goes with that, but like if something's too heavy, it's like it makes it like you can't gig that. Yeah. Right, because I'm like my board is kind of, but you know, on big, that point, right? Yeah, but your, I have yours I, is heavy, but I have wheels, I guess. But you know, bigger acts, they have someone who does it, who crews, carries yeah, it, who, who do that. So that's not a problem once you get to a certain level of you know performance. I'm guessing. Yeah, I always see those big bands like the Rig Rundowns of like oh, like uh, like Black Keys or like you know a Slipknot or whatever, like. It's not bands I actually yeah. really like or listen to, but I watch their rig rundowns, and I'm like, man, they have like the drawers of pedals and stuff like that, oh and MIDI God. switchers. I'm like, man, that is sick. But they have like Semi-truck. at least one to two people like <laughs> manning their guitar rig. Yeah. Plus the person on stage who's manning, who's hitting the controls, but they have somebody who's like contingency, like if he doesn't do it, I'm gonna make sure he hits that. And if he doesn't do it, then I have like a backup like rig, like. Uh, there was like I think Event Sevenfold or like somebody like that. It's like oh yeah, it's like I have a a B rig right here next to it in case that goes down. I plug into this and like <laughs> everything is exactly mirrored. I'm like oh shit, shit. <laughs> That's in cool. In case those nine volts go out. No, yeah, nine yeah. Volts. In case like pedals go out or like his amp goes down, like he just plugs into the B rig. I'm like man, that's cool. But I'm like Jesus fucking Christ, man. That's that is like whatever. I guess too much. That's a band I've never been able to get into. Yeah, I mean, to me, I'm like, I like, like I said, I just watched the rig rundowns. Like, yeah. Those are kind of cool. Like, I was adding a note there. Okay. Yeah. Um, Nobody cares. There's like a, a other like, yeah, other bands where they run stuff like a little bit different, but they kind of like they trying to have the whole like if a pedal goes out, like it won't fuck up my whole rig. Like uh, your boy, uh, brand new when he has his rig, it's like mm-hmm. a giant fucking board. But his whole thing is like, all he analog ran, pedals too. Yeah, and he ran it into like a 
G2 or something like that, mm-hmm. like some like some switch from Gignat or uh, the gig rig. And I'm like, oh, if his pedal goes down, it's it's like it, yeah, it's like an ES8 kind of thing. Yeah, but um, it was before ES8. Um, and I'm like, oh, that's kind, of, that's that's cool. So he can switch certain pedals on for different patches and stuff like that. It's all analog. And because he was like, oh, I don't want to deal with the digital stuff like ES8 or the G2. His was the gig rig before. It was all just dip switches basically. Yeah. And I'm like, that's cool. He's like. I know what's going on. And if my pedal doesn't work and it dies, then I'm like, I'm just not going to hit that patch. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> so it's stuff like cool. that. It's like, but he's got a giant fucking board. He's got like PT pro size board. And it's like, Oh Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. But he's also like, he's pro. That's what he's doing for his living. So that's kind of cool. But I'm like, I don't know. So I guess there's a fine line for me. I say PT Junior, if you're going to run all your pedals in line, that's the perfect size. Anything yeah. bigger than that, you're like wavering on like, ooh, it's <laughs> a little too big, maybe a little too elaborate. Yeah. But, you know, what about you? What do you say? Well, I, w- I want a bigger board, so I'm not going to listen to what you say. What about, yeah, so how big would you go? What's, 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 too, what's, what's the cutoff point for too, too much? How many pedals and how big of a board? Well, you can't just put a number on it. Yeah, you should because that's kind of the point of this podcast. So oh people can shit, see. you're right. Um, this topic. I would say overdoing it would probably be having a fractal FX8. Yeah, and <laughs> being a dickhead like you. Four cable method. <laughs> <laughs> shit for bass. I mean, I I'm running four pedals now. I added one more, and that's like complicated for me. Yeah. So for me, I found like my, like I said last, oh, well, I found my perfect rig and then I added something else. Like, oh man, it's even more perfect. Yeah. And then also the thing is, but yours is just an always on thing. Yeah. I don't see it. I don't know. I don't really venture into that. Um, I have my MXR board. I have like maybe, <laughs> I have like 12 MXR pedals now. Yeah. But you can't fit them all on a board. Oh, you you're going to be me. like, oh, I'm going to grab this oh, and yeah. gig with it. I'd probably grab like I'd probably call out sick. Yeah, I'd probably grab like eight <laughs> pedals, you know. If somebody's like, Kyle, we need you to play this gig on guitar, you're like, ooh. Oh, man. Click <laughs> <laughs> Do I just set the phone down and slowly walk away like they can see you? <laughs> they like it, that would work. It's like, hello? Kyle. Hello? Kyle. Hello? You're like close the door. Click. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know. I I think that uh, if I were to be gigging, I'd probably want something even smaller than your the junior size that you were talking mm-hmm. about. Because you w- just like want less shit in the way, mm-hmm. I guess. I guess we we think about like when you're writing. Like I want a ton of different sounds and delays mm-hmm. and maybe like gain stages and stuff like that. But when it really comes down to it, if you're gonna be playing, I'm like, you want like less. two gain pedals, maybe. Yeah, but I'm like, you know. Three. And I and I say all that because I have a fractal. <laughs> but the thing is, I'm like that's one pedal, right? It is one pedal, and I have it all designed <laughs> that way. And it's like it's taken like I tell everybody, I'm like it's not simple. It take has taken me well over a year and a half to dial that thing in. Yeah, and I'm always changing it up because I'm like for the amps and for the rig and for the sound and for the band, yada yada. You got to change it up, and you got to try and dial it in, and so it takes time, but. As far as a pedal board, I think the smaller you go, five would be great. No. Yeah. Okay, so far I'm actually really loving my mini pedal board. Well, There's you have eight on there? Seven pedals. Dang. But they're all mini, mini boards. It's a mini, mini pedal board. Yep. I have it's legit. Tuner, phaser, light drive, uh, distortion, boost, uh, what? A delay, reverb. Yeah, seven. I wasn't counting, but yeah. And then sure, I have I, a, I have a, I have an Altoids tin, so that's if that isn't that's seven, eighth. that's gonna be the. You're seventh. gonna stomp on that that's and it's gonna, gonna like, explode. Yeah, I got my picks in there. I got my mints. So I gotta keep my breath fresh <laughs> for that microphone. <laughs> yeah, because right. microphones <laughs> smell like ass. Yeah, so we uh, are gonna end it on that note. Yeah. All right. Uh, before we go, we just want to say thank you guys so much for tuning in, and uh, if you guys want to help be a part of the show you guys can join us on uh, all the social medias we're on instagram and facebook just search the tone jerks you guys can join the group and follow us on instagram but another thing before we go we just want to uh, we've talked it up for a little while and uh, this involves our instagram i think we're we're doing a giveaway oh yeah uh we're uh teamed up partnered with a fat foot effects uh 
Digger over there has uh, worked and built a kick-ass pedal that we're going to give away. So uh, more details uh, involved with that, but it's going to involve, you know, following us on Instagram, following Fat Foot Effects. You guys know the drill. And then just do a hashtag and probably repost a picture or something like that. But it's a really cool pedal. It's a um, dual overdrive pedal in, you know, your regular MXR TC size box, you know, a uh, single sized box, but it's two pedals in one. It's a preamp on one side, and then it's a distortion circuit on the other side. So stacking those motherfuckers, it's going to be pretty sweet. It sounds great. Kind of don't want to give it away. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm only like, can we, can we win it? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think that's going to be <laughs> we okay. We can start a new account. Yeah. Not uh-huh. tell each other. Yeah. We're like, who's this, uh... who's this Ryle... <laughs> Macintosh. <laughs> Who's this Brile and this Cayenne? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Um, yeah, so um, just uh, keep an eye out that uh, for that guy. We're, we'll post more info in the group and on Instagram. So a little more incentive to join. Um, so, but before we go, I wanted to say if you guys really like the show, you guys can help support the show on Patreon. You become a patron on Patreon. For as little as one dollar a month, but for you know you double down, and for two dollars a month, you guys uh, get an extra episode a week, like sometimes two, if I'm feeling up to it. <laughs> um, you guys, uh, you know, get the behind the scenes, the nitty gritty kind of shit. So, um, and then we do have a t-shirt discount code for everybody in uh, the five dollar and up tier. So there's some incentives for uh, joining us. We're not, we're not just going to take your money and say thanks, dude. <laughs> um, but uh, we just want to say, uh, you know, thanks to everybody, and we want to give a you know shout out. We're gonna name drop. We got we're just gonna pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. So uh, let's let's start off. You know, the whole long list here. It's getting it's growing. It's ever growing. Yeah. But we got uh, Johnny Ray. Uh, we have uh, Co and Paul from the Flippin' Flippers podcast. They release an episode every Tuesday. So after you're done listening to this, we're Tone in. Brothers. We're Tone Brothers on the Tone on Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Fat foot effects. Yeah. We also have, uh, what? Jim. Jim Jim Bowers. Bowers. Yeah. How how could you forget? And then, um, (laughs) we have, uh, like my pedals. Yeah. And then we also have, oh shit. Uh, Michael Newman and Abe Newman. I'm going to say it again. No relation. We don't know yet. (laughs) They they may not know actually. (laughs) They're brothers in tone. They're brothers in tone. We have, uh, Bruce Banana. Okay, yeah. I don't know who that is, like, actually. It's a, it's a newcomer. <laughs> yeah. New- <laughs> uh, there's RJ. From the Teletalks yep. YouTube channel. Uh, we have uh, Will Lehew. 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 Yeah. Can you say, say it one more time so everyone Will knows? Will Lehew. There you go. Good job, Brian. We have uh, Doug Gann. Doug Gone. Doug Gann or Doug Gone. One of us is right. Doug Gann in 60 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we we got some new ones actually this oh, week. Some, some new ones yeah so we have uh jason fuzzmonger oh yeah so i think he used to sell fuzz pedals and that's where he got his yeah his i name. think you know back in the back of the day yeah. maybe in a past life <laughs> yeah. he was selling fuzz pedals <laughs> i'm a fuzzmonger and then we have uh jamie davis jamie davis yeah He's uh, been with us in the group for a long time. It's nice to see him on the Patreon side. Yeah. No, uh, so that's cool. You know, I uh, just want to thank all you guys. Thank you. Uh, for a Patreon support. And thank you for tuning in. I think that's about it. We're blowing a bunch of hot air. All we right. will see you next time. Bye. Love you.